All right. Well, welcome everybody. You guys excited to be here? Yes. yes? All 5,000 of you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, the good news is we have a lot of people at home watching this webinar base, so they're going to be able to ask their questions, which is really cool to be able to interact with other people that are not here. But tonight is all about spring clean. And what do I mean by that? We need to clean up our environment. We need to clean up our toxicity overload. We are so overloaded with toxins. It is absolutely insane. Some of these statistics I'm going to tell you tonight are going to blow your mind. So here's what I want to do for you guys tonight. I want to teach you the dangers of toxins. How we don't even think about it and we're toxic. I want to teach you how to identify these toxins so that we can start minimizing our exposure to these. And also, what can we do to help our body get rid of them? Okay? So this is going to be interactive. You guys can ask questions here at home. You guys can ask questions. This is your workshop. I'm just going to help guide us through it. But if you guys have questions, ask away. Okay? All right. So what is my purpose here as a Max Living Doctor? I, I've truly, I've dedicated my life to changing healthcare. Because think about what healthcare looks like right now in the United States. Do nothing to prevent problems. And when you lose your health, you run to a doctor and take a pill to fix a problem. Does that fix the problem? No. no, of course not. And a lot of you are here because you didn't know where else to go because you were tired of hearing the same answer. Take this pill. Well, that didn't work. Take this pill. And now it's side effects. Let's take this pill. So a lot of you are here to completely do something different. And we have to do something different. If we're not happy with the results we've been getting, we can't continue to go down the same road and expect that something else is going to happen. We have to take a different pathway. And that's what I've dedicated my life to do because we need to change healthcare. And what I want to do is I want to change the way we think about health. But think about what we call health care is really sick care, disease management. Yes. What do you need to copy and paste? Oh, so you don't know how to right click. Yeah. No. Two fingers. Use a right click. Wow. Okay. So I just schooled her on how to use a Mac. <laughs> yeah. So um, what we have is a system for sickness and disease. What we're trying to do is create a new pathway for people to go down, which is filled with health and hope. Because I want you guys to all know that every single one of you here is supposed to be healthy. You deserve to be healthy. We were designed to be healthy. And if we're not where we want to be, we need to figure out how do we get there. My job is not to help you make, be healthy. It's just to help guide you to make the decisions that you need to make so that you can express that health that God put in you when you were born. That's my only thing. And our big vision is for the United States to change where we go first. Where do people go first? What we have here is a system for health. We, you guys are patients. You guys know about the five essentials, right? The five essentials take care of your nervous system because that's what controls everything. We have to understand that health comes from inside out, not outside in. We have to put quality nutrition in our body. We need to exercise on a regular basis. And of course, we need to minimize our exposure to what? Toxins, which is why we're here tonight. Okay. So some of this stuff might be a little bit, um, for those of you that are not patients, you might not know exactly what we're talking about because we do have some basic workshops that this builds upon. So some nutritional workshops. So if you don't know those stuff, go home and watch those, but you're still allowed to ask questions here tonight. All right. So this blew my mind. According to the Global Healing Center, Americans on average are exposed to 2.1 million different chemicals every day every day. You start to think about this. I was talking to a patient earlier. Everything we touch is chemicals. Every piece of plastic is a chemical. Do you think that just is hard and doesn't rub off on you ever? Think about the air we're breathing. You go outside, you start a car, start a mower. You're breathing in chemicals and toxicants. What do they spray in your lawn so you don't get weeds? What, what about drinking tap water? Are you using it to brush your teeth? I mean, think about all these different avenues. It is absolutely insane. 70,000 chemicals are used commercially. 3,000 chemicals are added to our food. 10,000 chemicals are used for food processing and storage. And then the EPA, they estimate our home, the air in our home to be between five and 100 times more polluted and toxic and outside air. Crazy, right? Mm -hmm. So basically what we do every day is we just marinate in chemicals. 
and we don't even realize it. Scary stuff. So where are these toxins found? They're in the food we eat. They're in the water we drink, the air we breathe. Think about the stuff we put on our body. Chemicals, right? Cosmetics, makeup, personal care products, deodorant, cleaners, the things you clean your house with, the thing you store your food in. All toxins. So this, I want to tell you right now, just to let you know, this workshop can be a little overwhelming. I've done this before. It can be overwhelming. I see some eyes are going big, like, oh, crap. What am I do? Here's the thing. We understand that we live in a world of chemicals. There's no way to avoid chemicals. If, you, if I told you you needed to avoid chemicals for the rest of your life, where would you have to live? Antarctica? It's, you are right and wrong at the same time. So we used to think Antarctica or the North Pole would be a great place, but they did studies of, they took blood out of polar bears. In the Arctic Circle, they found flame retardant in their blood, which means it's traveled. These chemicals are, they're called forever chemicals. They don't degrade. And you want nothing to do with these. So some of these ones I'm going to teach you here tonight, you really want to just avoid. So what we really need to do, we need to control what we can control. We need, to make, we need to change what we can change, but we do not have to freak out over the things we cannot control. Okay? So what, does, what do toxins do to your body? What do they do to your body? They do a whole bunch of different things. One, they can cause inflammation in your cells. And if you know anything about inflammation in your body, inflammation is the root cause of diseases. It's the beginning of cancer. It's the beginning of heart disease. It's the beginning of diabetes, arthritis. It can go on and on. So we do not want inflammation. But not only that, toxins can destroy your cells. They can destroy your DNA and alter your DNA. They can mimic hormones in your body, which lead to cancers like breast cancer and uterine cancer. So there's pretty nasty effects of all these toxins. In fact, I'm talking about cancer. Most people think that cancer is genetic. Only 5 to 10% of cancer is genetic. 90 to 95% has to do with nutrition and toxins. And you can control a lot of that. That's good news, right? Just because your mom had cancer like me doesn't mean that I'm going to get cancer like her. I heard somebody said that cancer might load the gun, but your lifestyle pulls the trigger. I thought that was a pretty good analogy. Because yes, you might be predisposed to something. Doesn't mean I'm going to pull that trigger. It means that I'm going to do whatever I can to stop that from happening by changing my lifestyle, making better choices on a regular basis. So tonight, I'm going to use this phrase. We need to exit the conventional. Because think about what everybody's doing right now. Everybody's conventional. They're doing what everybody else is doing, just going with the flow. That's easy to do. But where is that leading, to, where is that leading us? More cancer than ever? I mean, if, if cancer was truly genetic, we would have the same pace of cancer, yet we have more hormone-based cancers than ever before, and it's exponentially getting bigger. How could that possibly be a genetic thing? Genes don't change that quickly. It has everything to do with our lifestyle. What does conventional lifestyle look like? Well, I drink Coke instead of water, All right? Fruit Loops for breakfast, sandwich for lunch, something fast because I'm busy, I'm overstressed, I'm overworked, I'm depressed, I don't like my life, I'm overweight, I can't do the things I want to do, and now I have a diagnosis, and now I'm going to a hospital and a doctor, and now I'm on seven medications. Does that sound like a conventional life that you want to live? I don't want to live that life. I want to, it is the normal life. And I'm not even close to wanting to be normal. I know growing up, we all want to be normal. You know, you don't want to get made fun of. Except for my wife. She's taught me that being weird is awesome. Nobody wants to be normal. Dr. G is like, yeah, weird is awesome. Yes. Whitney, I mean, I, yeah, weird is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. But we don't want to be that conventional person. We don't want to live that life because I don't want that result. So we have to look really far into the future. Where, where, where do we want to end up? And I know where I want to end up. I think it's the same place most of us want to end up, which means that we just need to change our pathway and go a different direction. You guys, you guys on board with that? Yeah. Okay. So now here, here's my challenge to you. You are here tonight. You're watching at home tonight. You might be the only person that you know out of your friends, your family, your coworkers that are doing this right now. Because you're taking a stand. You're going to make something different, right? You're going to get a different result. 
How many of your friends know the stuff that you're going to learn here tonight or you've learned it already? How many of your friends know this stuff? Very, very few. So here's my challenge to you. Help us help them. I want you to start thinking about tonight, I'm going to say some things and a friend, a family member, a neighbor, somebody might pop into your head. And when they do, that means they, they need our help. I want you to write them down. In fact, we have a little sheet that I don't have. We, yes, that, there is a little card right there. What does it say? Help my friends and help my family? Yes. So I want you to just keep that out next to your notes that you're going to be taking here tonight. And if you think of somebody that could use our help, and, or at least should hear what we're having to say, and you want them to be healthier, write them down. Now, I like, I like to be a little competitive. That's just my nature. Not a lot, just a little. So I'm going to do a little contest. Whoever writes down the most is going to get a prize. And you're going to want this prize. Okay? All right. So just keep that in mind as we go through this. So how do we exit the conventional? We don't want to be conventional. We want to be different because, because we want to be healthy. What we're going to do tonight is expose where are the toxins? Where are the top toxins? The one that we have control over, we can make a different choice right now. Number one, your cleaners. What do you clean your house with? If somebody walks in after you clean the house and go, oh, it smells so good in here. It smells clean. Guess what you're smelling? Toxins, fragrance, stuff that should never be used in your house ever again. It causes cancer. Now, my kids take it a little bit too far because they've heard me say things that they probably shouldn't repeat. Like, hey, it smells like cancer in here. <laughs> my kids, I, I was like, guys, that's, that's for home. But um, when I, because I'll tell you, I used to love going down the aisle that had the downy and had the tide because I love that smell. If I go down there now, I get a headache within like, I had to like hold my breath because I, if I'm looking for something, I'm done. I get a headache. Why? Toxins, toxics. But here's the thing. If you hang out there for long enough and you're used to it, guess what? You don't smell it anymore. So you don't even know you're getting toxified. If we leave something at a friend's house and they wash it for us so nicely and it comes back, I'm like, oh my God, too much Tide or whatever it is, I can't handle that. So I've, had to, I've taught a lot of my friends, let's not do that anymore. All right, let's make some better choices. So um, I have a chiropractor, he's a, um, a good friend of mine up in Indianapolis and he does some urine testing and he tests for toxins in his patient's urine. And the number one toxicant that shows up, formaldehyde. And where is formaldehyde found? Cleaners. So what do we need to do with our cleaners? We can make a couple quick changes. One, I gave you guys tonight non-toxic cleaning recipes. So yours looks a little bit different and mine's a little bit smaller. I did this so you could all eat or eat. See, <laughs> I'm hungry, I guess. All right, so some ways to clean your house healthier. And at the very end of that, you'll see recipes on how to make your own cleaners. Baking soda, water, vinegar, yes. Make it smell good. Essential oils, right? You can tune it. You can put it. You want pine salt smell? You can make pine salt smell, but do it without pine salt, okay? Another thing that I like to use at our house is a product called Norwex. And Norwex is a non-toxic cleaner. So we have a little information here. I know uh, Celeste is a rep for them, but I use them at my house because they are so easy to use. I always call them rags and they always yell at me because that's not a rag, it's a cloth. But I always I say, give me the rag. Um, but they have these, I mean, you could put raw chicken down on your counter, get your little cloth wet because it has silver. Actually you wove it into it, it kills all the bacteria. So you can wipe it down and then there's no bacteria left. Now I've seen it done. I still make sure that I clean a little bit better than that, but I know you could do that. So the Enviro cloth is something that I use a lot. We use it here at the office. For glasses and mirrors, we use the polishing cloth. Um, you can use the bath cloth to wipe. I mean, I've done it before where you actually take a shower with no soap, just the cloth. It does a fantastic job. It's pretty amazing. Yep. And then what's the other one I use? Oh, my other favorite one is the, um, the vegetable and uh, fruit scrubber. One side is smooth, the other side's got little prickles on it to help clean it off. You can take a cucumber and get the wax off of it in like two seconds. Pretty awesome stuff and it's all non-toxic. That's the whole, their whole brand is about being non-toxic first and then being helpful second. So that's awesome stuff. The cloths? Oh my God, I've had mine for seven years. Oh, okay. I mean, you just, 
Mm -mm. No, I, I just buy more because I need them in different places. Yes. Cool. Yep. All right. So some of the things that are in your, in your, um, your conventional cleaners are uh, formaldehyde, chlorine, chlorine, ammonia, and there's, I mean, there's a ton more. So it's like, let's just not use that stuff at all. 409, simple green, just not anymore. Move to something healthier. Um, disinfectants, that's another big one right now. Disinfectants. Everybody's disinfecting everything. And I don't know if you read on the CDC website, which I don't care or believe usually, but this one I actually liked, which what it said, um, we're cleaning too much, we're disinfecting too much, and we're gonna cause more problems. I was like, oh, finally they said something that's actually, true. I didn't say that loud, um, but that I actually believe. So this is why I do not, we shouldn't be sanitizing our hands after every two things. This is why the kids who are kept out of the dirt get sicker than the kids that get into the dirt. We need germs, we need bacteria, we need viruses. But a lot of people are using these things that have propylene glycol, coloring, fragrances again, awful for you. Now, I understand that sometimes there's a need for a hand sanitizer. I can't wash my hands and I just touch something I'd rather not have touched. Let's do something, right? What's really cool is my wife's company, Beauty Counter, has come out with what's called Hand Savior and it is a all natural hand sanitizer, but it's called Hand Savior because it has really cool oils and stuff in there that make your skin softer and help with what they say, lip spots and sunspots. So if you guys wanna try this, you're welcome to try this, okay? All right. Have you guys ever heard of the EWG website? Okay, you have, you have not? There's an app. Yes, there is an app. So if you've not heard of it, I'm gonna put this little thing up here. You can actually take out your phone right now if you'd like to, and you turn on your camera, which is really cool, and all you do is put that in your camera zone and it takes you right to a website. And this website is your EWG website. And it's all about, so EWG stands for Environmental Working Group. It's a nonprofit. And their job is to create databases on what is healthy versus unhealthy chemicals. And what they do is they rate every chemical on a scale of zero to 10. Zero, one, two, three, green, meaning not harmful. Then you have four, five, six, seven, which turns yellow, which is moderately harmful, and then you have eight, nine, 10, which is severely cancer-causing, don't ever touch it, don't want it in your house, run away the other way, okay? So you can actually take this and look up any disinfectants you've been using, um, any, um, what's it called, it's hand sanitizers, cleaners. You can plug in the brand, you can plug in the chemical that you're questioning, and it'll give it a rating of scale one to 10. Anything that's yellow or especially red, out of my house, okay? because they are awful for you. All right, so what do, um, so I'm gonna transition into heavy metals. You guys know where we find heavy metals and where we expose. There's two major exposures to heavy metals. Do you guys know what they are? Cosmetics, very good, Sue. No, there's some in water. Tap water's gonna have some. The other one, it, heavy metal exposure. So first of all, what do heavy metals do to us? So you said in the water, you said in cosmetics, cancer. You have aluminum, memory loss, and Alzheimer's. I mean, it just keeps going. Vomiting, nausea, headaches, neurological disorders. So we have water. We have cosmetics. The other one is vaccines. And I'm going to tell you right now, this is not a vaccine talk. I'm not going to talk a lot about it. But I will tell you one of the reasons, just one of the reasons why I would not get any vaccine ever is because of the heavy metals that they put into it. You guys know why they put that in there? It, well, that, that is what it does, but that's not why they do it. Well, maybe it is why, I don't know. Yeah, the, huh, I like you. <laughs> You're, yes, well, thank you. You were about right. But the reason, why, the reason why they put it in there is if they just put the weakened virus in there and they put it into your body, first of all, viruses never go into your skin, do they? They go in your mouth. Right? You breathe it in or you swallow it, and then it goes through a different type of immune reaction. They don't know what to do when it goes in your arm. That doesn't make any sense. So what they have to do is excite your immune system to find it and have a reaction to it. How they do that? Aluminum, mercury, these heavy metals. And guess what? They don't really like to come out of your body. That's just not good. And then we get nervous system disorders. We get all these problems. And you wonder why people are dropping dead after getting a vaccination. Not good, babies, kids, I mean, this is awful stuff. 
Now, here's the thing. I'm not going to get this vaccine that they have, this shot, whatever you want to call it. Um, but here's the thing. If you decide to do it, that is obviously your choice. I would want you to do it in the safest manner possible. Would you guys th think that's a good idea? No. No. I would No, it's not. But that's just my opinion. Um, no. But those people that are still going to do it, and I wanted them to be safe, we need to help your body get rid of those metals as soon as possible, which is why we actually put together a COVID-19 vaccine detox. It's five different things. One, two, three, four, five, that's five, right? And they're all droppers. So it's very, very simple. You just put one squirt of each one of those into your water, you drink it once, maybe twice a day for a month or two. It, good. it does taste good. This is, all, this is a very, very powerful detoxification program for people that have taken a vaccine. Whether it's the flu shot, the COVID, it doesn't matter. It's still the stuff in there that you do not want. Okay, so that's enough of that. But heavy metals, not good. The one area I do want to focus on are, like she said, Miss Sue, the cosmetics. The cosmetics. So this is very interesting. Um, the Environmental Defense, they tested 49 different makeups. And that included... Uh, foundations, concealers, powders, blushes, bronzers, mascaras, eyeliners, eyeshadows, lipsticks, and glosses. This is what they found when it came to heavy metal contamination. 96% of them contained lead. 96%. 90% of them, beryllium. 61% thallium. These are all heavy metals that we probably never even heard of. 51% cadmium, 20% arsenic. Uh, guys, this is going to kill us. And you're putting it on your face in the, in the name of beauty. I mean, I only use blush and bronzer, right? I'm joking. Nobody, <laughs> so many people like, your body, so oh, yeah, <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, so and we need to find a safer version of this stuff because all the stuff out there is not good. Almost all of it. So my wife actually... Um, went on a journey to find something safe because my wife loved Mac makeup and my daughter at the time was four and starting to want to look like mommy and wear some makeup. So she's like, I don't know. I mean, I never really thought about it, but somebody, one of her friends told her, Hey, this makeup is safe over here, but this one's not safe. So she started looking into it and found out that all the stuff my wife was using was not safe, contaminated. And she was like, I can't believe I've been doing it to myself. There's no way in heck I'm going to do it to my four year old daughter who's way more susceptible to heavy metal exposure. So she began a journey of looking for something safer. So we finally found it, which was awesome because I had a lot of women, especially patients of mine asking me, what does my wife use to do her hair? And what does she use for deodorant? What does she use for eyeliner and makeup? Because they knew that she would be finding something safe. And here was the problem. We'd find a company that would have good shampoo and then the conditioner had something bad in it. I'm like, well, that, what does that say about the company? I can't trust them. So what happened was we couldn't find one company to trust. So we would be like, this shampoo, this conditioner, this makeup, this, this moisturizer. So it was all over the place. And I was trying to memorize it to help my female patients that kept asking me questions. I'm like, I don't, I don't even know anymore. And the, hard, the frustrating part was when my wife would find something that was good, that passed the test, it didn't really perform. It didn't really work very well. So we finally found a company that we fully trusted. And here's, here was the, the big kicker, the one that really made us trust the company. Full transparency. And what do I mean by that? Their number one goal is that everybody deserves beauty and healthy beauty and safe products. So what do they do? They voluntarily join forces with, again, the EWG to make sure that every ingredient that they use in all their products was a three or below. Meaning that everything that the whole company makes is safe. So if you don't know what, if your stuff is safe and how it rates, Again, this is a different version of the EWG website. This is EWG uh, Skin Deep. So this is the makeup version. So you can put in your makeup, and a lot of times you can put in your different moisturizers, and they'll tell you and give it a grade. And if it comes up as an F, you don't want to use it anymore. Oh, that's really cool. Did not know that. Okay. Oh, very good. Very good. All right. Any questions so far? So here's the good news. What's that? Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm, yeah. No, that's a good question. I got you all excited and didn't give, give you the punchline. Um, it's called Beauty Counter. 
It's the same one that makes this over here, this, this hand savior. Um, and the, everything they have is safe. And here's the cool thing. My wife loves, th this is her passion. She really wants people to understand and get educated on the dangers of what we've had been doing, thinking it was nothing wrong, understanding that there is a problem with that and giving you guys a solution for it. If you would like to meet with my wife, she, she does free consultations here at the office just to come and sit down and say, hey, what can I help you with? What are you looking for? And she has a lot of the products that she can bring in for you to either look at or try, and she can help make recommendations for you. So on that same sheet that you had back there, Cheryl, if you flip it over, you can, you can um, have a free consultation with my wife. She'll sit down with you and spend as much time as you need to to help you understand and help, help you make better decisions when it comes to your personal care products. Yep. Okay. My wife, Georgie. Yes, Georgie Moss. Yep. All right. What we're going to go to now is what are we cooking our food in? We used to think Teflon was the best thing ever. Non-stick pans, right? And I'm sure we've all used them. And then we've also done it wrong where we used metal spatulas in non-stick cook cookware. And then all of a sudden you get little pepper flakes in your eggs and I didn't even put any pepper in it. You know what you're eating right there, right? Teflon. 100% toxic. Like kills your thyroid gland. Like destroys you. I don't know if you ever read, if you ever got Teflon back in the 80s or 90s, they said, do not cook this on high heat, one. And two, if you have a bird in the room, remove the bird from the room. Why? The fumes it's putting out kills the bird. You know about a coal mine? What do they have in a coal mine to make sure nobody else dies? A bird. So there's a gas leak. Bird dies first, people get out. Crazy, right? That is my history degree, yes. That was a Jeopardy question the other night. Just kidding. Um, so PTFE, polytetrafluoroethylene. Everybody say that fast. That's a, yeah, okay, that's okay. You don't have to. Um, but this is found in Teflon and nonstick cookware. Look where else it's found. Disposable face masks. The blue ones. So everybody's out there putting blue masks. So now they're not getting any fresh air. They're not protecting themselves from any virus because viruses go right through that. And what are they breathing? polytetrafluoroethylene. So pretend not to get COVID, but let's give you cancer. I'm telling you, the sense is gone. There is no common sense left. It's crazy to me. This is well, just one of the many reasons I will not wear a mask. I'm not going to kill myself for something like that. Okay. So how do we exit the conventional? We don't want to cook in that stuff. Let's make a change. Stainless steel, cast iron. Oh, yeah. Stainless steel and cast iron are the only two pots and pans I have. I have one cast iron and the rest of it's stainless steel. And now I understand why, uh, you know, grandmas always have the cast iron still always on the stove. That sucker's heavy. <laughs> I do not want to clean it. I just want to let it sit there and never use it again. Um, so we don't want Teflon. We don't want nonstick pans. So if you have them, I would donate them like I did and go get stainless steel. Ceramic. Ceramic's not bad. Yeah, ceramic is going to be okay. Uh, stainless is going to be better because you can use anything on it. I like my. I don't like using. What's that? Why are you, why are you heating milk? Make what? Oh, I was like, what are we making? You're lactose intolerant. Okay, I'm just looking out for you. Okay, like this is not good. All right, let's talk about plastics, microplastics. So where are we using plastics? I mean. It's everywhere. I mean, you guys are sitting on plastic right now and our keys are plastic. Everything's plastic, right? Well, what I'm talking about is the stuff we put our food in. So plastic is not good. Now, this is very, this is some more stuff I want to read for you because it's that interesting. Microplastics can be found in storage containers and surgical masks. Great. Uh, one literature review calculated the amount of plastic the average person consumes estimates the person drinks 1,769 plastic particles from tap water every day. Every day. Do you want to eat your plastic containers? If you're drinking tap water, you are. And it's crazy. Because you have to think about what else this is doing to us. Mm -hmm. So, not good. So plastic by itself, not the worst thing in the world, okay? But when we heat it up, it starts to leak plasticizers. Those are also called phthalates. And those are destroying us. 
So if you get a, a bottle of Dasani, guess where that Dasani's been? You think it's been cold the whole time? It's been in a warehouse. It's been on a hot truck in Atlanta. So when you heat it up, it leaches these chemicals like phthalates, which are also called xenoestrogens. Xenoestrogens mimic estrogen in your body and cause your body to produce more breast tissue, more, more ovarian tissue, more uterine tissue. So we, have, we get things like breast cancer, ovarian cancer, cervical cancer, endometriosis, because we're drinking bottled water. We think we're doing something good for ourselves, which we are, but we're destroying ourselves because we're getting bad versions of it. This is the same reason why nothing hot should ever go into plastic. So if you have a plastic container, it should be for cold fruit only. I've just, honestly, I've gotten rid of all my plastic containers. I've gone to glass. Worth it. But now what, do you, what happens if you take, you know, you have your leftovers in a plastic container and then you, have, you take the top off so it can breathe, but then you cover it in plastic wrap and then you put it into a microwave. That's a cancer casserole, right? Oh. I mean, that's a, that is ridiculous. I mean, first of all, never microwave plastic wrap, never microwave anything in plastic. Just don't use plastic if you can help it. Or a microwave. Yeah, so my microwave got hit by lightning about seven or eight years ago. Never missed it since. No, nope. because microwave, they, it, it, when you heat things up in the microwave, it destroys and denatures the proteins and the enzymes. It becomes dead food and there's nothing to it. The only person that ever complains are my parents. Because they've come and visit every once in a while like, I've missed the microwave. I'm like, okay. 30 seconds, minute and a half on the stove. Not a big deal. It's really not a big deal. You get used to it. So how are we going to exit the conventional? Kind of already talked about this. No more plastic wrap. No more plastic containers. How about, that's, I want you to reuse grocery bags. Do you guys take, if you use, I mean, get reusable would be great, but if you end up getting plastic, what do you do with the plastic? Just throw it away? Or we use it for other things. We, either, we use it for garbage bags. We, use, we try to reuse it as much as possible. Don't microwave in plastic, and of course, storing food in glass over plastic. Now we gotta talk about water. I hope nobody's still drinking tap water. If you are, we need to make some changes to that. Tap water, we already know is full of plastic now. Guess what else is in your tap water? Tell me what you guys think is in the tap water. Chlorine, do you guys know why they put chlorine in there? What's the chlorine for? What's that? Yeah, to kill the bacteria, right? God forbid we have bacteria because bacteria is, not, we have no bacteria in our body, right? You guys know we're more bacteria than we are human? You guys know that? Yeah. Okay, so well, let's kill the bacteria in the water, but let's drink that water. It's got chlorine in it. What's the chlorine? Oh, chlorine kills bacteria. What's it doing to our gut? Killing all the bacteria. And then we wonder why we have gut issues because we're drinking tap water. So chlorine, good? No. What else is in our water? Phosphates? Oh, yes. From runoff. And you have your, um, so that's pesticides and herbicides. Yeah. Fluoride. Why do they put fluoride in there? It's good for your teeth. Wow, man, we need to, at least we smile when we're dying, right? So we can see all our teeth. I mean, come on. It's a neurotoxin. It will kill you. So when your dentist put it on you as a kid, what do they say? Don't swallow it. But it's okay to swallow it in water every day. Again, it's, a, it's a toothpaste. It's in our toothpaste. That's why we don't use fluoride in our toothpaste. And guess what? My kids have never had any fluoride, and their teeth, they're not brown. They're not yellow. They're not rotten. So just saying. Because <laughs> everybody's like, well, fluoride is going to kill you. Oh, no. Okay, what else is in there? This is, we're going to get kind of gross for a second. There are heavy metals in our water. Here's the... It, right. Here's the, here's the good news, though. In Canton... Our water doesn't have very many heavy metals. Doesn't have very many dissolved solids, which is actually good. We actually have decent water in Canada. I've had, it, I've had mine tested and they're like, that's actually pretty good. So that's good news. But what's not good news is we, we, you have to understand our water is recycled. We, we pee and then we drink it. There's a couple of steps. <laughs> Lisa, there's a couple, there's a couple of steps in between those two things. All right? We don't just pee and then drink it. They do a couple of filters you know, and then we drink it. Again, just another reason why you shouldn't drink tap water. Okay, but here's what they don't filter out. They don't fill out people's medication. So blood pressure medication, out in your urine. Hormone medication, antidepressants, out in your urine. So when you're drinking, you think you're doing something good by drinking all this tap water, you're drinking antidepressants. Guess what antidepressants make you? More depressed. Okay, 
Yeah, blood pressure medication. Now I have hormone issues. How do I get hormone issues? I drink all this water. You're, you're drinking other people's pee and urine. I mean, it's just, you know, I'm, just, I'm just trying to gross you out. So here's another thought. What's the largest, largest organ in your body? Your skin, very good. She's right on it. She's almost like she knew I was gonna ask that question. Yes, so again, putting what we put on our body is very important, not just what we put in, what we put on. So again, good products. What about when you take a shower? What's your body doing to that water? Is it, it's absorbing. You absorb about 25% of what that water is hitting. And now we, we're, who takes a cold shower? No, we take hot showers. What do hot showers do? They open up our pores. And if you have tap water that's hot going, opening up your pores, it's those chemicals that we just talked about that are so bad are going right into your bloodstream, into your brain, into your cranium. Great. That's what we want, right? You beat me to it. She's 100% right. So not just this, but this hot water now hits the ground, steams up. And now what are you breathing? Well, when chlorine gets hot, it turns and it changes chloroform. You've heard of that? I know, Lisa, you're like, I, this is too much. I know, it's too much. But I'm only telling you things that I know that are bad, but that we can have a solution for. We can control this. So how do we exit the conventional of just taking hot showers and tap water and drinking tap water all day? Well, honestly, if you've got a whole house water filtration system, huge, huge thing. I got one probably about 12 years ago. First thing I noticed was when I took a shower, it didn't smell like a pool. I could not believe the difference. It was night and day, just boom, gone. So I have a whole house water filter system that takes most of that stuff out. But I wanted to go another step further where you have that drinking system. So you, that, that system right there is a drinking water system. So that takes everything out, reverse osmosis. So you, you're down to H2O. There's no more chemicals, no more phosphates, no nothing. But then we don't want to drink distilled water. We want to have some minerals in our water. So it goes through a couple more filters to add back magnesium and calcium. So my water at my house is at a pH of 9.2, which is a little bit alkaline, which is good for us. Yeah, it tastes fantastic. And then here at the office, we have a very similar system to that inside of this. And that is um, a 7.4. So the same pH as your blood. But again, reverse osmosis, minerals put back. Mm -hmm. reverse mm -hmm. bottles. Bottled reverse osmosis water, do they put anything back into it? You need to look to see, because a lot of times they'll have reverse osmosis water, and then it'll say magnesium chloride, calcium chloride, to add some of those salts and those minerals, trace minerals back in for flavor and for just because it's good for you. So you have to look at the label to see what's in it. Um, so but if it's in... You don't want, you really don't... Yeah, you're almost balancing it out, almost. Um, I, don't, I wouldn't want anything in the plastic bottles. Now, I mean, if I'm at the airport and there's nothing else and I need a water, okay. Okay, I'm going to get whatever I can get. It's not my go-to. I mean, 95% of the water I'm drinking is either right here or the one I have in my house. If I'm on the road, I do what I can. Fiji's a really good water. Dasani's not a good water. So Fiji, smart water, those are actually not even smart water. I think Fiji is just the number one water out there. Mm -hmm. Yep. So the other thing that you could do to help, and if you're not going to get a whole house system or in, in lieu of or instead of, you can get shower filters that get the chlorine out of it. It's like a Brita, it's like a Brita for your shower. And you'll notice that the chlorine goes away. Okay. So those are some, some things that we can do. And then let's talk about food. Now, I could spend all day talking about food because it's one of my favorite subjects, nutrition. But um, for those of you that have seen our Food 101 workshop, some of this is going to be a little bit of a repeat, which is good. If you've not seen that yet, I would suggest you go to our YouTube channel and watch Food 101. Or, uh, is it Food or Nutrition 101? Nutrition 101. And that's going to go through the basics about this, but I'm going to go through some of the toxins that are easy to identify and easy to remove. Number one, monosodium glutamate. MSG, we've all heard of this, right? Neurotoxin, causes headaches. I had a friend of mine in, in uh, grade school having seizures and they figured it was MSG. Now here's a, here's a scary part. MSG is just glutamic acid. Glutamic acid is the danger, especially when you have too much glutamic acid. So they hide monosodium glutamate or glutamic acid 
into different versions. So you need to know what these are. And in my workshop, they're on there, but I'm gonna tell you a couple of them anyway. Um, autolyzed yeast extract, hydrolyzed yeast extract. Honestly, if it says autolyzed or hydrolyzed anything else after that, it could sound really good, like vegetable protein. Uh-uh, high glutanic acid, don't want it. Sodium caseinate, that's another one. High glutanic acid does the same thing as MSG. So you really need to just be aware of these. Again, it comes down to reading the ingredient labels and understanding what's good, what's not. And we have a whole workshop about label reading on that show, on the um, YouTube channel. Aspartame. Aspartame is a chemical that tricks your taste buds into thinking it just tasted something sweet. It's not really a sweetener. It's a chemical. Aspartame, NutraSweet, sucralose, saccharin. So I really don't understand why anybody would ever use the blue stuff or the pink stuff ever again. I'd honestly, I'd rather you just use sugar. And you guys know how I feel about sugar. Right. Aspartame is in just about all the gum. Mm hmm Yeah, if I chew it now, I'll get a headache. Aspartame. Yep. So I'd rather use sugar than this, and I don't want you, you know, like, I don't want you eating sugar anyway. So, so that's how bad that really is. Nitrates and nitrites. You guys know where you find those? And all the good food, right? Hot dogs and pepperoni and bacon and lunch meat and ham. Yeah, what's that? Pizzas, yep, it's all in there. So here's the good news. You can get all those things next door, nitrite and nitrate free. So better version, yes. Is it healthy for you? No. There's no such thing as healthy pepperoni. Sorry. <laughs> There's no such thing as healthy bacon. Sorry. <laughs> right, right. But if you're going to eat it every once in a while, which I'm okay with, get a better version of it. We call that making a better bad choice. If you're going to make a bad choice, I want to make you just make the best bad choice you can make. Okay, the healthiest bad choice you can make. Uh, FD and C colors. So anything that has fake coloring in it, obviously we don't want that. Um, in fact, red coloring in a lot of the colors leads to hyperactivity in children. So if your kid's off the, off the rail, he probably got something with coloring in it. You can start narrowing it down. What color was it? Don't ever, don't ever touch that stuff again. Uh, refined oils. This is the stuff that gives it a longer shelf life, like corn oil, canola oil, uh, vegetable oil. This stuff's awful for you. Um, it causes inflama inflammation in your body. It leads to heart disease and cancer. And then genetically modified foods. We don't know enough about it. I don't want it. Do you guys want genetically modified foods? No, I've seen enough. I don't need it. I don't want it in my body. Sure. Sesame seed oil is okay. Mm -hmm. Flaxseed oil is okay. You don't want to heat up flaxseed oil. Uh, sesame oil you can. Make sure it's not refined sesame oil. Mm -hmm. If you're going to do sesame oil. Sure. Great. Mm -hmm. That's disgusting. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, it was a huge thing in, in the UK. Yeah. That, that, and you're actually getting to my next point because this is it's called bio, uh, toxic bioaccumulation. Yeah. So she was telling a story about um, in England how there was arsenic in the food, in the chicken, and they couldn't figure out why the, the levels were so high. So they went to, you said, was it Thailand? Where, uh, Thailand where they were raising the chickens and they were actually feeding the chickens and then they'd slaughter the chickens. Then they'd take, what was it, their beak and, and their liver. And the liver, again, is your detoxifier and grinding it up and putting it back into the feed and feeding these chickens again and again and again. So that's toxically bioaccumulating. It's just, I mean, it's just getting worse and worse and worse. That sounds awful. And so, this toxic bioaccumulation, what does this mean? It's like, let me eat that, that chicken's liver who has a little bit of toxins, and I'm gonna eat that one, which is gonna make mine worse, but let's feed that to that one and keep getting worse. 
I mean, the, I mean, that's a really good example. That's not the example I was going to use. I was going to use fish, little baby fish, maybe a little bit of toxins in the water and the little feed that he gets, right, in the ocean. Well, then this fish here, he's going to eat this fish, but he's not going to eat one of those. He's going to eat 20 of those every day. So a little bit of toxins times 20, it's a little bit more. And then this guy, he's going to eat 20 of those every day. He's getting a little bit toxic. And then somebody like this is going to come and eat him. And then this guy is, then you have the big monsters that are eating these guys. And you're just toxically building and bioaccumulate, accumulate, accumulate. Which is why when you do eat fish, which we know is good for you, you want to eat smaller fish. You don't want to eat the big, big fish. That's why tuna is not really the best thing for you because those fish are pretty big. Now, don't get me wrong. I love tuna. But I don't eat it as much as I used to now that I understand this. You don't want the big grouper. You want the small grouper. You don't want the big amberjack. You want the lesser amberjack. You want flounder. You want salmon. Good quality fish. Tilapia is small, not good fish. Not a good fish. I would not, I, I'd try not to eat tilapia. It's mostly uh, bread and um, not in the ocean. But in yeah, it's mainly farm raised. Farm raised. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, and farm raised fish is one of the most toxic things on earth. It's not natural. Nothing good is going to come out of that. So don't ever eat farm raised fish. And don't, and don't be afraid. Like my wife's not afraid. You shouldn't be afraid to ask when you go to a restaurant, is this salmon? wild caught or farm raised? A lot of times like, I don't know. I'm like, great, well, find out. Go ask the chef. Oh, it's Atlantic and it's farm raised. Great, I won't have that. Because they're super proud of it, it's kind of funny. If you ever just see Atlantic salmon, that, there is no such thing as Atlantic salmon. Farm raised, 100%. <laughs> There's no such thing, but you, you, you probably thought it was, right? I mean, why would, you why would you question that? Atlantic salmon sounds great. Farm raised, mm -mm, not touching it. It's not cold enough. No, and it's not natural. There are, they live up near Alaska, and they go up the rivers, and they spawn in the rivers. That's natural. That's where they're supposed to be. They're out in the Atlantic Ocean in bins and just nets and just living around in there. Mm -mm. And guess what they're fed? Corn. Genetically modified corn. So all that goodness that you get from them eating their diet up in Alaska, you're not getting any of it over here. That's why it's not good for us. Genetically modified corn. Great. Even better, right? Yes. So here's another source of toxicity. Are your supplements toxic? Hmm. I know a lot of people take supplements and I, I take supplements. I think that some supplements are absolutely necessary at this point. But what most people don't realize is that you might be doing damage by taking supplements that you know nothing about because you never read the ingredients. This is why, remember what we did. Yeah. Yep. Brought you brought, brought yep. So what I did for Lisa, what I'll do for any of our patients is, hey, listen, you're taking supplements when you start care? Great. I'm glad you're already on doing that. Bring them all in. I want to look at all of them with you. Because a lot of times there's stuff in there that is poisonous, that is awful for you. I will show you what it is so we can learn and we're going to throw it away. Sometimes you're taking stuff that's just not very good. Sometimes you're taking stuff that's actually very good. I'm fine with that. I'll give you a high five. That's great. Sometimes we have, we're taking this much stuff and we don't even know why we're taking it. Somebody said something good about it, so I'm going to take it. And then some of it's just redundant. So I try to take as little as possible to get the result I want. Yeah, we got you off a lot. We just, made, we just condensed it all and got you better quality stuff. So what, um, what do we want to look at? We don't want, well, let's just, we don't want artificial colors, artificial flavors, no additives. Okay, we do not want any of that stuff. Um, if you ever look at protein powders, people ask me all the time, well, I know you have protein powder here, but what do you think of this one? So pro the whey protein, yeah, whey protein comes from a cow, correct? And that cow should be healthy. What does a healthy cow eat? Grass, which means that if you get protein, it needs to be 100% grass-fed. Okay, that's easy to do. I can, see, I can find grass-fed stuff, grass stuff. We also don't want sugars in it. So sometimes they go, oh, there's no sugar in it, but what do they sweeten it with? sucralose, Splenda, Aspartame. And then they, they put colors in it to make it look fun and different flavors to make it look cool and taste better. Where ours is 100% grass-fed, no added sugar. We only used a little bit of stevia because we want it to taste good, but we also don't want to overpower anything. No gluten, no nothing. No soy, nothing bad. So again, it really comes down to the quality of the ingredients. And you really want your supplements to be in the closest to natural form as possible. Have you guys ever tried a one-a-day or a Centrum? You ever tried that vitamin? 
That's bad, right? I've done it. And if you ever take one of those on an empty stomach, what do you feel? You feel nauseous. Why? Well, the easy answer is your body wants to get rid of it. <laughs> right? Because your body is smart. And it, it recognizes it's full of binders. It's full of junk. And I don't want it in my body. I want to please throw this up. So the thing is, it's not in a natural form at all. They've condensed so much goodness into such a small pill. It's so compressed that you couldn't break it with your hand. So if you can't even break it with your hand, how well do you think your body is going to digest and absorb? The studies show about 25% of those vitamins are actually absorbed. Then you can also ask the guy who works on your septic tank how many pills he sees in, in there because they come out looking like vitamins. I've taken, I've, I've taken um, x-rays of patients and seen their vitamins because they're in that form. Mine, are with, I mean, within 30 minutes of you taking it, they're dissolved and already working. So you really have to look at not just the quality of what's in it, but the absorbability, the purity, what else is going on in there. So going back to what we talked about with Beauty Counter, that's a, that's a company that I can trust that they're doing all the right things. For everything that they have, it's all gonna pass the test. We stand behind everything that we do here when it comes to supplements. And the, reason, the only reason why we even have supplements or even went down that road, we were tired of people buying stuff that didn't work or was actually dangerous for them. So doing a lot of research about our brand compared to other brands, here's some things that you need to know. One, GMP certified. We are all research backed. So everything, we've, everything that we've created is backed by research. So here's a couple of things that you can look at um, to find out if, is your company good? GMP certified, FDA registered, NSF certified. Because you have to understand something about supplements. Zero regulation. I could cut my grass tonight, take the clippings, put them into capsules, put them into a bottle and call it something for allergies. And guess what? As long as I have the little thing on the side that says not intended for cure, treat, whatever little, little disease, I can sell it to you and I can charge you whatever I want and I can claim whatever I want. That's disturbing. So these certifications, GMP and NSF, are at least giving you a somewhat of a standard to know that what they say is in it, it's actually in it. A study was done back in 2005 that they took 40, this is an independent study, took 40 glucosamine um, products off the shelf at CVS, Walmart, Costco. 60% of them had less than they said that they had in it. 25% of them had zero glucosamine in them. Again, did they, do it? did they break a law? Apparently not. I don't know how it's not, but there's no regulation. No regulation. Ridiculous. But all of ours, we stand behind no artificial sweeteners ever in anything that we have. No gluten, no GMOs. Strength and purity guarantee, meaning that it actually works. I've never had more people tell me that I can tell a difference when I take my vitamins ever. And I got off my vitamins for a little bit because I thought that I didn't need them. I started taking them again, I feel a difference. So here, one other thing I wanted to tell you about vitamins, this was interesting. A couple of years ago, I would tell people, listen, there's two supplements that we really need because you're probably not getting these things from your diet. One is do we, we need vitamin D, right? Because we, are we all in the sun as much as we, we really need to be as a human being? No. And if you're vitamin D deficient, your immune system drops down, your, your brain function drops. Your gut does not work as well. So we need to, I said, everybody on vitamin D. Okay. Then I realized, well, we also live in Georgia. And do we eat a lot of fish in Georgia? Not really. And if we did, it's not very often. And hopefully it's at least good quality wild caught. But if we're not getting essential fatty acids from fish, okay, well, we just need a supplement with that, right? So let's take a fish oil. So we get our essential fatty acids and vitamin D. I told everybody those are the two, only two things we don't need. Because I thought that we could get everything else from our diet, right? Because technically we should be, all this, I mean, if we lived by the ocean and we were shirts off and we were, we were fishing all day and we were eating from our garden, we wouldn't need a supplement. But that's not where we live. So vitamin D and fish oil, absolutely. But then I started learning more about farming. And I know how they're supposed to farm. And they're supposed to, you know, use this one year and you move it up to the, over here and you do the crop, you know, the crop rotation to allow the soil to regenerate. That, what's that? Seven year rest. 
Well, guess what? Big companies don't have time to rest for seven years because there's money to be lost. So let's just keep it going with fertilizers and all this other stuff. So what do they do? They don't do anything they're supposed to anymore. And what that's done to our, our soil is depleted of all of its nutrients and minerals. So if the soil doesn't have any minerals anymore, you're getting a shell of a vegetable, a shell of a fruit. The banana is not, ha does not have the potassium we, we think it does. Kale does not have the calcium we think it does in the vitamin C. They are shells of what they used to be. So this is where I've begun to re-implement a multivitamin. Because I do not want to be deficient in minerals. I do not want to be deficient in vitamins. And even if I'm eating well, guess what? It's not well enough because it's a shell of what it used to be. So now I recommend the vitamin D, fish oil, and at least the, vitamin, uh, the multivitamin for women or men. To, uh, at a minimum, I think that'd be good. But we've been talking about toxicity all day, right? Well, what's really neat is that we've come up with a new cleanse. And I, I wish they called it cleanse. I wish they at least called it a daily cleanse because it's very, very gentle. And this is very different than the detox. So we have, these are our two products for detoxes when it comes to our Max Living supplements. We used to think that this was something that we could do daily. In fact, we used to call it the daily detox. And as we did more and more research and talked to more and more naturopaths and medical doctors and nutritionists and other people that are in, in more of the holistic realm, they kept looking at this going, this is an incredibly awesome product and it's very, very powerful. And you're telling people to do this daily? Uh, that's too much. And we started going, oh man, I think you're right. This is, this is an awesome product. It is too much. This is more of a quarterly thing to do. So this product, yeah, let, me, let me talk about this one first with the next slide is that one. So what we had to do is figure out something that we could do that's more gentle and easy, but at least it helps our body get rid of toxins. Because guess, remember guys, we're marinating in toxins all day. I want to help my body and help my liver detoxify. So we've come up with the Max Cleanse. The Max Cleanse is two capsules a day. That's a whole bunch of stuff you can't read on it. Can you guys see that too? No. Um, but I know that are in it. Um, there's activated charcoal. Activated charcoal helps to cleanse the body from harmful toxins. Um, Silymarin and watercress, which are things that are good for your liver. Mm -hmm. um, with green tea extract with elagic acid, which helps protect your cells from damage. So those are antioxidants. Um, and then there's a bunch of different vitamins just for overall wellness. So this is something that we could do every day to help our bodies detoxif detoxify from the marinade that we sit in all day. Now, the quarterly detox. This is the detox system. This is the big daddy. So it's two actual bottles. You have a cell detox that you take two in the morning of, and you have the body detox, which you take two at night. And basically, this is a cellular detox. So the cell detox goes into your cells and basically scrubs them. Okay, that has very important antioxidants. Have you guys ever heard of glutathione before? Everybody say glutathione. <laughs> glutathione, very good. Glutathione is the most potent antioxidant known to man, and your body makes it. But can it use a little bit more? Absolutely. So there's glutathione in here, but it also has the um, cysteine and glycine, which are the amino acids that your body needs to make glutathione. So that's one of the strongest antioxidants. But it also has superoxide dismutase and catalase. Again, very strong antioxidants. Things that are going to go in and break down free radicals and pull out toxins. We also have, um, let me read, what else is in there? I know there's a probiotic in there, there's glutamine, dandelion, and uh, sulfur, and spirulina, chlorella. Again, all these things are great for you to help get the, cell, get the cells to detox and then protect them with antioxidants. Okay, great. Now we just put all these toxins out of these cells. What do we need to do with them? That's where the body detox comes in. What does a body detox do? It has magnesium and activated charcoal. And what those are are binders. They bind the toxins in your digestive system and then gently move them through. So this is not something you're going to run to the bathroom with. All right? This is still gentle on the body, but it's very, very powerful. I'll do this once a quarter. And I typically do this when I do um, a challenge with my patients. We do these 30-day challenges where we eat really well for 30 days, go on the advanced plan, start losing some weight, burning fat. Because guess what fat harbors? Toxins. So if you're going to burn fat, you're going to release more toxins. This is the one you want to do. So anytime we make a change to our diet, I do this at the same time. Okay. All right. So you don't need both. I would do one or the other. I think it would be overkill. Mm -hmm. No, you could. It's not going to hurt you. I, just don't, I would save the money and do, do something else or just save the money. Yep, I would do one or the other. All right. Well, we, we talk about these chemical toxins, but where else do we find toxins? 
our thoughts. Don't they call it stinking thinking? Yeah. Zig Ziglar, you guys ever heard of him? It's a good one. Yes. Negativity. Where are we finding negativity right now? Well, besides everywhere. The news. Please don't watch the news. It's just, it's ridiculous. It's like a puppet show. It's, it's, a, it's almost a joke. I don't watch it. I, I think I've only turned it on once in the past year, which is the election. And even that was, I shouldn't have done that either. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, speaking positively over your life is where we should be. Stop focusing on the negativity. So honestly, I've had patients that are very anxious, very upset. I said, are you on Facebook? Yep. Do you watch the news? Yep. I said, okay, I have a challenge. Seven days, neither of them. Seven days, can you handle it? I don't know. Like, come on, nothing's going to change. If, if something bad happens, I'll call you. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you some news. <laughs> I get my patients, I get my news from my patients. So I said, seven days without it. She took the weekend, came back on Monday. She says, I already feel awesome. Like, I know. I, you know, I don't like living in a bubble, but now I kind of do. I don't want to hear about your, your junk over there. I don't, it's not, I don't, stay away. All right, I, I do a, I, I work really hard to create positivity in this office with me, my staff, my family. We try to just focus on the good and be grateful for what we have. That's how we need to open up every day. That's how we need to think and focus. Because if you're focused on the negative, guess what you get more of? You get negativity. Yep. So how do we exit the conventional? Get off of Facebook. Stop watching the news. I mean, that's really the biggest things right now. That's where the, the, it's concentrated there. Um, what else can we do to detoxify our body? How about exercise? Sweat, burn. When you sweat, you release toxins. That's a good thing. But guess what else it can do? It can lower your cortisol levels. And cortisol levels, that when they're high, guess what you are? Stressed, negative, can't sleep, anxious. I've seen more anxiety and depression in my practice over the past few months than I have in my entire life. Because we are all more stressed out than you think you are. But it's happened gradually over time. Imagine, take yourself from a year and a half ago before any of this stuff happened, and just take yourself and plug it in right now. You would freak the heck out with all the stuff that they're talking about. But we've just kind of gotten used to it at this point. I'm telling you right now, we're all more stressed than we think we are. We need to do something to help. Let's make, not make it worse by watching news. Let's do something good by eating better and detoxifying. And how about some exercise? Just go outside and breathe some fresh air, right? So the exercise that we do is called the Max T3 workout. Raise your hand if you've done the Max T3 workout yet. Okay, some of you have, some of you haven't. So for those of you that haven't, I would like to challenge you to try one, just one. Uh, and you guys already have access to it. It was in your book. It's a little bookmark. You go to maxt3.com, you plug in the code, you get access. So you can watch it on your phone, your laptop, TV, wherever you want to watch it. And you do a workout. It's a 12-minute workout. So the workout that we did yesterday is the super fast lower body workout. That's the one I'm going to suggest you guys do because you don't even need any weights. I used very little weights yesterday. And if I had to bend over to tie my shoe right now, I wouldn't be able to do it because my butt is so sore from our workout. Okay? And that's a good thing. I like being sore. That means I actually got something. So raise your hand if you want to be healthy. Of course, we all want to be healthy, right? But we're, again, let's, let's think conventional for a second. What does that mean? Conventionally, I feel good. Is feeling good a good definition of health? I think we all know this by now. What is the definition of health? The definition of health has to do with 100% function. If you're functioning the way God designed you at 100%, the way we're all supposed to be functioning, how much cancer could there be? Heart disease. We could be here all night. The answer is always going to be none because we're all supposed to be functioning and healing at 100%. Makes sense, right? Okay. Well, what organ controls and coordinates all functions in our body? The brain. Exactly. It's the brain. It's the brain and it's the nervous system. The brain sends signals down the spinal cord, out along nerves, to tell you every organ in your body how to function properly. If we cut a nerve that goes to your stomach, can the stomach function anymore at all? No. What if there's a misalignment in the bone that's going, the, the, there's a misalignment called a subluxation. It's putting pressure on a nerve that's going to the stomach. Is the stomach going to function at 100% anymore? No. Can it be healthy? 
But conventionally, people are going to do nothing about that because guess what? The nervous system is the, the most important organ system in the entire body and the most ignored. Blows my mind. You know why? Because you can't take a drug to make it better. So let's just ignore it so people get sick. So now you have a subluxation, but you didn't know anything about it because you didn't go to a chiropractor and get it checked. And now you have an issue with your stomach after 15 years of that being there. And now you have a problem, right? So now we go to a doctor and what do we do? We get hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of tests just so they can figure out what drug they're going to give you that you need to stay on for the rest of your life so you don't feel that pain anymore. Did that fix the problem? No. There's only one way to fix the problem. Let's get to the cause of it. If you're not getting your nervous system checked on a regular basis, you're ignoring the most important part of your health. And we don't want to ignore it. And how do you know if you have problems? Or well, there are warning signs. Some people have the typical ones that they think about going to a chiropractor for like headaches and neck pain and back pain, maybe some numbing and tingling, sciatica. But what about dizziness and fatigue? What about reflux? What about ear infections? What about getting cold a lot? Again, conventionally, well, headaches, I could take a pill for that. Problems? Midol. High blood pressure? I could take a medication for that. Depression? Medication for that, right? Numbing and tingling? I'm sure there's a medication for that. Neck pain? Painkillers? Dizziness? I'm sure there's a medication for that. Fatigue? Caffeine, right? Okay, acid reflux. You see how there's a drug for everything up there? And there's a different drug for everything up there. I have one solution for all that. Remove the interference. Find the blockages. If you have a warning sign, all that tells me is one thing. Your body is not healing the way it's supposed to be healing. And if our body was healing the way it's supposed to be healing, would you have any of those problems? No. You guys know this because you're here, right? Good. How many of your friends know this? Nobody wants to know? Because they'd rather keep their head in the sand? I understand. I had a conversation with a little 16-year-old uh, today who didn't do anything she was supposed to do for the past four, four weeks and she didn't get any better. And I said, well, do you want to get better? Yeah, but I want to work for it. So like, you sound like every applicant I've had. I want your job, but I don't want to work. Can I take my vacation now? Can I get paid? I'm like, what? No, guys, you have to understand. You have to be willing to work for what you want. And if you want to be healthy, which I know we all do, because we all want to be there for our grandkids. We want to be able to do the things we want to do. You have to work at it. And here's the great news. It's not that difficult. If you do a little bit of things on a consistent basis, you all can be healthy. Some of you have a lot more changes to make than others. That's fine. Slow and steady wins the race, right? Make a change. Make a change. Every month, make a change. Every week, make a change. I don't care. Make changes. And when, here's, the, here's the key, though. Once you make that change, burn that bridge. You burn that bridge. I don't like burning bridges. My dad always told me, don't burn bridges. That's a bridge I'm burning. Okay? I'm not going back once I learn this. So we need to help you. We need to help your friends. We need to help your family. I want you guys to take a second and write down those people that you think you were thinking about. I know you guys were probably taking notes, but if you can even think of one person that you want to get this information to, write it down. I'm going to give you a minute or two because I'm telling you, you want this gift. I've forgotten anything. Okay. Yep. You guys are here. Yes. U.S.? That's okay. It's the Anderson family and this family. Oh. <laughs> this family. <laughs> nice. Um, one thing that I have found since I, you know, when I first started coming here, I did mention it to many people, but the one thing I keep getting is just I don't have time to do that. And I know, mm -hmm. well, you have time to do this and you have time to do that. Mm -hmm. But they don't understand the importance that it doesn't take that much time. Mm -hmm. But in their mind, three times a week, you know. Yep. So about here, here's where we don't want to jump the gun on. Not everybody needs three times a week. 
I always tell people, I have, I, have, I have wives whose husbands are like, I'm just too busy. I said, but their back hurts. I'm like, listen, but they don't want to come because they don't want to get into the, something long term. So I understand that. I say, why are we looking at that when we don't even know what the problem is? Let's take baby steps. You have a problem? Let's find the cause. Let's do an exam, maybe take some x-rays and see what's going on. If, it's, if there's nothing I can help you with, I'm going to tell, that, that, tell you that and tell you who we need to send you to. If there's something I can help you with, let me show you exactly what the problem is. And I'm going to explain to them what that's going to do to their health. At that point, they can say, yeah, I want to get this fixed. This makes a lot of sense. Or no, I don't have time for it still. The people that don't have time for it after they understand the problem, they're never going to get better because they're not going to put the effort in no matter what. Yeah, I I'm, we really, so I don't like people thinking past the first visit because I don't know what that looks like. I really don't. I say, let's find out what the problem is first. Then can I help you? Let me give you an adjustment, see how you respond. Let me see how much care you're going to need. Then let's decide. At that point, they, they, they make a decision. We can't force feed people right. as much as we would love to lead these people to water and make them drink the water. Put their head in. It doesn't work that way. It has to be, yeah, even if it's free water, they st <laughs> yeah, yeah, they still don't want the water. So we really, it's not about force feeding anything. It's just about helping people understand. And again, most people don't understand. I mean, most people think chiropractic, they think back pain, neck pain, headaches. You guys are patients. You understand there's a much bigger thing to this. I have a, a philosopher of chiropractic. That, I love this thing, this phrase. He says, going to a chiropractor just for back pain is like going to rob a bank and just stealing the pens. I mean, I think it's hilarious. Yeah, I'm going to steal the pens. Did you not know there was a lot more in the, in the safe in there? They had no idea. Because those people that are saying that have no idea what we actually do. They just don't. And once they understand, they typically are like, I'll make the time and the money. I'll invest in my family to get the care that I need and we need for the rest of our lives. And if they don't, you know what? I can't do anything about it. I sleep well at night knowing that I never filtered anything for you guys. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's exactly right. You don't want to spend a lot of money on your food now. Well, you're going to give that money that you're saving to your doctor when they're saving your life when you have a heart attack. Exactly right. You either pay for it now, or you're going to pay for it later. I can tell you right now, I'd rather pay for it now and enjoy it all my days instead of waiting and losing my life early and not even enjoying the rest of it. Yeah. Does anybody else, is everybody else finished writing their friends down? We got one more. She's, oh, she's, she's serious. She's looking through her phone. Contacts. I love it. I love it. That's, you, t you take your time. Last one. Okay. I like it. Your kids? Yeah. Yeah. Did you ever give them that book that you read? Maybe they would read that. Maybe it would make some sense to them. Dr. Livingood's book. Oh, what's it called? Oh, of course, yeah. Mm. One of those days you might just say, we're going to SeaWorld and we're going to Dr. Moss's office instead. <laughs> My parents have done that to me. All right. All right, raise your hand if you have one person's name down. One, you have two? Lisa, how many do you have? Zero. Zero? You don't know anybody? I talk about it, and yeah. I have everyone's head in the sand, people. Mm. I mean, they can see the difference in me. Mm -hmm. you, I know it's a huge difference. When I walk through this yes. door, it's not what you see today. Yes. And when I try to talk about it, they just, oh, I'm so glad for you. <laughs> yeah, I don't get it. So I had one. She's here. Oh, you did have one. Yeah, and she is here. <laughs> she told me, just so you know, she told me a long time, but when she yeah, said three before. times a week, I thought, I cannot do that. Mm -hmm. So when did, what did you give me when mm -hmm. I was at three, yeah. the end of my rope in yeah. so much pain? Yeah. And, and how much better are you now? I know. A just, different person. Yes. And it's only, been, it's only been, what, six weeks? Yeah. It's only been six weeks. Incredible. And you've seen improvement on me because I did the work. You did the, yes. the work. Yes. Star patient. And I ignore you 
at that slide. Mm -hmm. Once, sometimes we fail. Mm -hmm. Then we remember, oh, you mean, she mm -hmm. told me something about this, mm -hmm. maybe. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And, and they yep. So we never we never give up. I, I've had a patient took seven years to get her husband in here. We never give up. Three and a half. Well, that was three and a half to get your dad. Five, four no, and a half. Oh, well, hey, you got five to get dad. <laughs> All right. So who has the most written down? I'm guessing it's Celine. How many you have? Four. Very good. You have. Oh, very good. That last one paid off, I guess. All right. Well, good. Well, I'm, I, well, here's what we're going to do. Well, one, you get the, the big winner. You won a $75 gift certificate to Beauty Counter through my wife. She donated that for you guys here tonight. So congratulations. Yes, for second place, do that. Give her a t-shirt because that's awesome. So that's part of the gift. The other part of the gift is actually for those people you wrote down. Something I've never done before, and I'm going to do it because I feel like it just needs to happen. Typically, we'll call these people or your friends and maybe talk to them, maybe give them a discount. We're not doing that tonight. We're giving them a complete free exam and x-rays. Yeah. So if you have other people you want to write down now, I'll still do that for you. Okay? <laughs> okay. So Whitney will make sure that all of your friends have access to that. They have two weeks to use it, but the exam and x-rays, which is normally 120, on me, including for you. I know you're a guest here tonight. If you would like to do that, you'd be glad to use that as well. I hear that a lot around here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Fell off a horse, got stepped on by a horse, yes. All right, so I have something neat for you guys. This is something we've never done before. And for you guys at home watching, I want you guys to do it as well. You can hit that little button there, wait, that really cool little button. Um, We've set up a campaign for the next 30 days to detoxify your life. So what you're going to do is you're going to pull out your phones and you're going to text our phone number, which is right down there, 30 Detox, all one word, and it's going to enroll you in a 30-day detox program. What that means is you're going to get emails and you're going to get uh, one email, I think it's one email a day and six total texts over the next 30 days, and they're going to give you an ingredient, what's bad about it, how to avoid it. So you're gonna learn a little bit every single day. It's very, very cool. This is something we've never been able to do before. We're getting super high tech on you, but I think it's gonna be super neat. So just text 30Detox to 770-345-9355. You can do that if you're watching at home um, and you'll get a text back within a minute that says you're enrolled. And starting tomorrow, you get your first text slash email. Today we'll tell you to watch the video too to, to go over what, what to expect. Oh yes, little little video. Mm -hmm. So is that a different text number than what? Number that's your t that's the same number. Yes. Mm -hmm. Just our phone number. Yep. And you should get a little text back and it gets you enrolled. You can watch the video at home and then it gets started. Yes, short video. Yay! Mm -hmm. So How for those, short is the video? it's just a few minutes. <laughs> How much time do you have? Just listen to it all. I don't know. I'm yeah. up early and be here tomorrow. <laughs> no, it's only it's only a few minutes. Um, I do want to make sure that the rest of you, job. yeah, <laughs> you do just a good job. I do want to make sure that you guys are connected with us though online because we do. This is the one thing I do use Facebook for, and it's one thing I would recommend. We try to put positivity out there through our Facebook page, so we do put recipes and workouts and all kinds of good quotes, just things that help motivate you and keep you focused on good stuff and blind out the bad stuff. So if you're on Facebook, make sure you find us at Moss Family Wellness. Um, yep. And then on YouTube, we have our YouTube channel, which is Moss Family Chiropractic on YouTube. We have a bunch of our webinars and seminars that we've recorded, um, some fun videos on there for you as well. All right. I think that is all. Do you guys have any questions we have not addressed? Any questions from online? People have told the same thing. Oh, you guys are very welcome. <laughs> If I like you, am I in the page? You're in the page. Okay. Yes. You I, have, I know you like him. I know you like me. I appreciate that. If you like me, you can give me a hug. See, I don't 